Hey, we're here. All right, we're live. Good evening, everyone, or good morning, or good after morning, whatever time of day it is, whenever you're watching this. Thanks so much for tuning in. We have a great show planned tonight. Well, I hope we do, where we're going to be talking about some kitchen design things. Obviously, this is Mark Tobin Kitchen Design, so that's what we're going to do. But uh, this video is the best free kitchen design tool, and I'm going to bring you to a tool that you all know, and uh, maybe you could probably guess what it is that I'm going to show you. Uh, I've used it before uh, many times, and I use it for clients all the time. So we're going to look on that uh, in a little bit. We're going to design a kitchen and just work through uh, this tool that's online for free that anyone can have access to. It's a great way to... Um, to, to plan out some some kitchen ideas and that's really the the best part about my job at least is when you're designing a kitchen you're looking at a space there's multiple ways to lay that space out and it's very um, beneficial if you can have some type of 3d visualization to help you do that along the way now i use a tool that's not free it comes with a yearly license and all that stuff and it's it's great and all, but for the average people out here, like even myself, if you just want to lay out a kitchen very quickly, not have to learn all the the uses of, of you know, a particular program, then using this tool will be very, very uh, good for you. And anyone can use it. I'm going to use this live stream as a way to teach through it. It's the IKEA Kitchen Planner. If you haven't figured that out yet, we're going to jump on it in a minute. But uh, we're, I want to use this as a way to teach someone who's trying to learn how to use that. Um, but they can watch this video and hopefully learn along the way. But uh, like I said, designing a kitchen, when you're looking at a space, you want to be able to come up with ideas and, and change things around in such a way that it doesn't matter on the plan if it makes sense or if it doesn't make sense, if it works or if it doesn't work. It, it's a way of getting ideas out and visualizing what the space is gonna look like when you you know move things around from different walls or if you're gonna change wall lengths or knock out walls or whatever the case may be, add an island, change the color of cabinets or put a drawer bank here as opposed to something else. And using the IKEA Kitchen Planner is a really great way to do that. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to jump on and get right into it. Before we do, I will say hi to everyone who's coming on because I really appreciate every week all those who, who come on every week. And I know that from week to week, there's different topics and sometimes it might be more interesting than not. Let me bring my microphone down a little better. Maybe that... Uh... Hopefully you can hear me all right. But uh, so hopefully this will be as interesting as any other live stream. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. And of course, vote on the poll. If you're watching on YouTube live, you can vote. And the poll tonight is, do you think you could design a functional kitchen? And you have three options. Of course, I watch MTKD. That's me. Uh, maybe after a few more MTKD videos, I uh, keep you watching. And, and no, but I'll keep watching MTKD. So... <laughs> I just thought that was funny. All right, hit the like button. We're going to share the screen. This is what you're going to find uh, when you um, log into IKEA and you're going to be able to see a screen that just look, looks just like this. It'll say start designing and you'll come to this uh, room selector tool where you can just you know, select the room that you want to design, the shape of the room. And you have some different options. You have enclosed kitchen spaces and you have uh, open kitchen spaces. For the sake of this video, uh, you know, maybe we'll use this one. Um, well, let me get my thing back here. Maybe we will use, oh, I got to go down here. Hold on, just bear with me and I'll, uh, I'll get this. There we go. Maybe we'll use this one here, um, but you can play around with all these. These just allow you to create different types of spaces where the kitchen is within these. Uh, this area here and this dotted line represents another part of a, of a room, a living room and whatnot. Uh, the same with this, the same with this. So you can play around with these and... Um, you can uh, you can you can see how that goes. So um, and I'll try to keep an eye on the chat as we go along. But later on, I'll, um, I'll maybe I'll break this into sections and we can um, answer questions as we go. Because I see Michael is on. Hey, Mike. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna bring this one up. Uh, hey, homie, I cannot design a functional kitchen. That's why I have you. Yeah, thanks, man. <sighs> Commercial kitchens. No, I've never, I designed one commercial kitchen in my life, but it's not really something that I would say I'm 
I know much about. All right, let's go. So once you get to this uh, page, you can select your shape. Like I said, we're going to select this room uh, shape. Uh, maybe this is just the type of room that you have. Uh, and I'll um, we're just going to select it anyway. No particular reason why. And uh, every time you uh, select a room, you have to override the previous room you selected. And what that does is it just resets all your wall heights and everything back to uh, the, you know, what, it, what it would be when you open up the screen. When you get in here, you will see that uh, you have some options. Room shape, de define the space. You can have elements, openings, and coverings, such as uh, floor covering, wall coverings, and whatnot. And you can change your ceiling height. And for the sake of this video, our ceiling height is going to be a 96 inches finished ceiling. Okay, we have our room shape figured out. So this is our room shape. Now we can add our windows and doors. And in this kitchen, we're going to move this window. And all you do to move a window is click it and drag it. And you can see that it, it shows you the measurements on each side of the window. So you can drag it in to be close to what you want it to be in your kitchen space. And right now we'll just put it here because we're gonna change these wall lengths. So you click on a wall and it'll tell you the distance of that wall. This is 157 and a half. And I wanna make this uh, 180 inches. And when you do that, you can select to apply above or below. So that means it'll lengthen it from the bottom or it will lengthen it to the top. And uh, so this one applied it to the above. So it lengthened it up this way up top. OK, so that's that's that. This wall here is 118. We're going to make this 10 feet exactly. So we'll just go 120 inches and we're going to go to the right. So that's fine. And then we have this little L shaped section here, this little nook. And maybe what I'll do is I will change this to 48 and we'll apply to the right. Now, what we'll do, we'll put a doorway here. So maybe this is a doorway to a set of stairs, basement stairs, or maybe out to another room. Uh, we'll put a doorway here. And we'll also put a doorway uh, in here. Maybe maybe that leads to, you know, another room as well. So we're going to put a doorway here. And I'm also going to duplicate that door. So you hit duplicate. And it puts it here where I want it on that wall. Now, you can move these doors around. You can change their size. So to change the size of a door, you just hit modify. Once you select the door and you can change its width, its height and its uh, wall side position and opening. And we will leave it open the way it is. But we will change the height to 80 inches and we will change its width for this door. It's an interior door, so we'll change it to 32 inches. OK. And then that's that. You just uh, you go there, you hit X. It will get you out of that menu. And uh, this door here we will also change. So you hit modify and we'll make this we'll make this a 36 inch door. And we'll make that 80 as well. Okay. Now maybe you want something else there instead of that door. So we can go up here and we'll just look at all these spaces. So so this is my basic room for now. So we can define our space. Now we could, if we wanted to, we could add a wall, we can add an area uh, separation, and we can add a slope ceiling. Um, and if you're going to use this, I suggest that you just play around with these things. But for this one, we'll keep it simple because we want to get into designing a kitchen. Uh, but maybe we want to add a little return wall. And maybe there's a little return wall here somewhere. So you just put it in, you just click and drag, and you can make that return wall whatever size you want. Let's just, you know, I'll just click and there you go. So now we just have a return wall. We hit OK. So we have this little kitchen shape. We have 10 by 180 uh, by another 120 inches. And, you know, maybe this is a little nook. Maybe there's another doorway here, whatever the case may be. So this is our little kitchen and we're going to design this. Now I have a window here, but let's go up here. We can hit elements so we can do structures, electricity, heating, ventilation and fittings. Um, and for the sake of designing your kitchen, uh, it's not super necessary to put all these things in, but let's just click on structures. We can do boxes and columns and, you know, there, there could be a pipe chase. There could be just some structure that's in the way that you want to identify. And this is the way that you do it. You just select that structure. It'll put it on the plan. You can put it maybe in the corner because it's a pipe chase. And then you can just select and modify that. So you can make its width uh, 12. You can make its height 96 or sorry 96 because it goes to the ceiling and it's depth 12 so it's a little pipe chase and you can put that right in the corner 
Now, when you switch over to the 3D section, which is down here in the bottom corner, it will show you your plan so far, but you can see you have this pipe chase here if you have one of those. I will leave it here for the sake of this video because what we'll plan to do is block that corner off. And when you have a pipe chase like this, uh, blocking a corner off is actually a good idea um, so that you're not cutting into a cabinet or using a blind or something like that. So we'll leave it there and we'll, we'll block the corner off. We'll go back to the 2D and we will have a look at so far at our plan. So uh, we can go back to elements. We may want to add some elect electric elements. Now, for some reason, they have these, they look more like a European style. I don't know why they have that. And they haven't changed those to something for North America. But you can put those in if you decided to or not. And then you have other things uh, like heating. So you have a, a resizable element or, you know, you could maybe like a radiator or something like that. And of course, ventilation, if you have some air ducts, you can put all these things in to get it as close to what your kitchen might look like. And um, then you have something that's uh, visually more representative of your space. And you go to openings, you do windows, doors and wall openings. Now, wall openings uh, would be, say, a pathway to a uh, living room. So that's what we want to do here. Instead of that door, we'll do a wall opening and we're going to put that wall opening on this wall. And we'll select it and we'll make it 72 inches wide because it's a little dining area in there. Hit OK like that. And I'm OK with its location. Maybe we'll drag it a bit more here. All right. So now we have this opening into this other room. And maybe this is what your, uh, your room looks like now. You know, maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger instead of 120. Let's go 144. So that's 12 feet. Oops, uh, undo is just control Z, just like anything else on the computer, if you make a mistake. And I did, I wanna go 144 to the left. I wanna go that way. All right, so there, that's a little better. We can maybe fit a, a few more things in there. I know I'm cheating because I'm modifying these walls to be whatever I want it to be. And in your situation, you would just have to deal with whatever it is that you have, so. Okay, makes sense so far. Phil, I have no idea why IKEA have all capitalized letters, if anyone does know. Uh, please let us know. And I do know that it's not pronounced Ikea. It's pronounced E-K, 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 uh, e uh, something like that. I forget. I remember looking it up one time. All right. Openings again. We can do windows doors. I think we're happy with all that so far. This window here, though, we are going to change. We're going to make it. So you just hit modify, select and modify is going to be the tool that you're going to use the most. And we'll actually make this a true 48 inch window and I'll make it 42 inches high. And then it's height from the floor, which is a great feature to have. I'm gonna set this at 39 inches. And that's just um, maybe random, but that's what we're gonna do. And I will adjust its position on the wall. Again, I'll cheat in a little bit to adjust its position because we want this to, to fit a certain way just so I can show you everything. <laughs> Mike, are you having trouble with Ikea? Why does Ikea not have matching cabinets in stock ever? That's a great question. I don't know. That's unfortunate. All right, let's go to coverings. We'll do this real quick. So paint, concrete, wallpaper, tile, wall planks, hardwood floor. Let's do some flooring. We'll change our flooring. We'll change it to this rustic looking thing here. At least we'll try. Oh yeah, there you go, click. You just got to click it and then do the little paint thing. That's fine. Let's go back to coverings. We'll do wall paint. Let's paint our walls, people. Ooh, they <laughs> give you some nasty colors to paint your wall. Um, wow. I don't know. Let's go with this pretty color here. Apply to all. Oh, that's nice. All right. Well, that's what we're going to do. I don't know if you can change the color to this. Can you? Let's see. Modify. No. Oh, well. Okay. All right, so we have our pretty blue walls, our hardwood floor, and this is what our kitchen looks like. So now if we're happy with this, and this is our space, and everything is good, then we can move on to look at uh, adding cabinets to our design. Jackie asks, Google and IKEA is the acronym that makes up the name, uh, the name it stands for, Ingvar Kamprid, the founder's name. Elmtard, the farm where he grew up, and Angard, founder's hometown. So there you go. Google knows all, Jackie, right? Thank you for that. 
Uh, so I guess that's why it's capitalized because they're all first letters of proper nouns. Okay, let's move on. So hit the thumbs up, stick around, ask questions in a little bit when we get to the point where I ask you to ask some real questions uh, that I that I uh, don't miss because I'm looking at this other screen. And uh, yeah, I've got uh, you know Buddy back here with his hunting hat on today. Phil, that's for you. New hat every week. Okay. So you can hit continue now that we have uh, something that is we are pleased with. It'll bring us into our design view, and this is where we can design everything. So now when you're using the IKEA planner, this little arrow section here allows you to move the floor plan position. And so if you just move it to the left, it'll move the whole floor plan. You move it up to that corner, and when you zoom in, it zooms into that corner. You can move it back down here, wherever you want, and it rotates around that point. So that's important when you're trying to look at different aspects of your kitchen in 3D. You can just move it around that point and uh, we'll use that as we go here to design our kitchen. So I'll just put it in the middle for now. This isn't a large kitchen, so it should be fairly easy to use. So we have cabinets, appliances, dining, kitchen extras, and the search tool. The main thing and what the main point really of this video is to help you with is to show you that this design tool, you don't need to be using Ikea cabinets. You, you say, Mark, I'm not buying Ikea cabinets, I'm doing custom, I'm doing something else. Then it, it still, this doesn't matter. You can use this tool to help you design spaces so you can get an idea of what that is going to look like. Now, regardless of, yes, you're using Ikea sizes, the point is to design something, to, to, to come up with ideas. That's really the, the biggest part of designing it, to fine tune these ideas so that you can get something that you're happy with. Like I said, no matter if you're using Ikea or not. Now, if, if you're using Ikea, it works really well because it's using all of their cabinets. And then, then, then you just hit order and it'll order everything and it'll always have everything in stock for you 100% of the time. But if you're not using IKEA, then you, it does. It still doesn't matter. You can get an idea of it, it'll print. I'll show you later on how it gives you an elevation view, and you'll be able to use those sizes to get you something comparable from another brand if you're going that way. But the main point, like I said, is to get you started designing something so that you can, um, you know, come up with a floor plan that you're happy with. Now uh, I'll show you some of these controls down here. We have 2D. So that gives you an overview floor plan mode. I like using this, but I like the IKEA planner because it lets you design in 3D as you go, which is very easy to do. We have these little uh, this little tool here, which is your view option. So your view height, default high, and countertop. So countertop will give you this kind of lower view, which is uh, I kind of like this lower view. You can also do from the ground, so. If you want to see what your kitchen looks like, um, if you're a cocker spaniel, 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 if you're a little dog, and you can do high if you want to see it from that elevation. I like the counter height, and uh, you know that's the height we're going to use for, for now. And display fronts, uh, well, this will take the drawer and door fronts off in your design all at once uh, later on. So that can be handy if you want it to be. Then we have the little footsteps, and this allows you to adjust the height even more. So this is the height of a person. So if you are five foot six or four foot, three foot 10, if you're just a little kid. So I am six foot one. So I can set that to six foot one. And bam, oh, there, set at my height, which um, I still just prefer it to be. Oh, yeah, and then you can walk around the space like that. All right, so back to 3D. Let's play around with those, learn how they feel. And yeah, we're at counter height, so there we go. All right, let's put some cabinets in. The first thing I like to do when I'm designing a kitchen is put in um, a sink base. So we just hit select the cabinets and it'll bring up all these different cabinets for corners, sink bowls, cooktops, all the different types of base corners that Ikea has or base cabinets, all the types of wall cabinets that they have and all the types of high cabinets. Very simple, you just select, usually start with bases, move to walls, go to high cabinets later on and uh, we can go from there. We'll put a sink base in, we'll put some appliances in, we'll put some other cabinets, we'll get this thing designed and I'll show you how to change options as we go so that you can, um, 
design this uh, yourself. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you are using IKEA or not. Uh, this will really help you get a, an idea of the different uh, layouts that maybe your kitchen could have. And maybe what we'll try to do in this kitchen is do a couple different ideas so that we can see how easy it is. So we can go with a couple different types and sizes. Once you click on the cabinet that you want, we'll go back to cabinets here. Once we click on uh, for double bowl sink, you can go the height, which they're all 30, and you can go width, which they're all 36. So I'll show you that in a few minutes. We'll go with the standard uh, cabinet. And once we select it, it just puts it on the floor plan for us. And then you select the cabinet, you select these little arrows, you can move it around wherever you want. We're going to put it under the sink and we can go to 2D as well and we can select it and move it around. It'll center it on the sink for you automatically so you don't have to be too precise with that. And um, so that's very helpful. Then when you can select that sink and you have some options here as well, you can modify some different things. You can change or delete the sink that's in it the faucets if you want. You can change the door style, the handles, the countertops, and a whole bunch of other things here uh, as we go. So you'll notice when you place one cabinet that it automatically adds for you a left and a right cover panel because IKEA suggests that you put cover panels on cabinets. And so if that's the case, uh, that's fine. What will happen, and when we add another cabinet, at least I hope it'll happen, is it will remove that because it understands that you're putting a cabinet next to it and it doesn't need to have one. So the next thing we want to do is put in an appliance. And whether or not you're using IKEA's appliances, it doesn't matter. I recommend that you use them for designing out the kitchen because it'll allow you to um, see the full effect of what a kitchen will look like instead of using the um, kind of these run of the mill generic ones, which are grayed out and they don't look as nice. So I say just go ahead, use the appliances that IKEA has so that you can um, you can see what it looks like. You can always delete them later if you're looking for pricing. You can always, you know, you can do that later on. But this gives you a good visual. And that's really what the point of what I want to do tonight. So the visual is the main thing. So we have some 24-inch dishwashers, which will be your standard size. They have them with uh, paneled fronts and without. And for this one, we're going to go with a standard dishwasher without a panel front, an integrated dishwasher. So you can either click it and it'll put it on the plan, or you can click and drag it and you can put it anywhere you want and bam. So what it does, it'll automatically add countertop over the top. We'll change all the countertops later in one fell swoop. So we'll leave it uh, this uh, butcher block for now. But there you see it, you added your um, your dishwasher. Now what happens if we go back to this cabinet and we're going to modify it. I just want to go down to the cover panels. So see, before it had a left cover panel and a right cover panel. Now it just has a right cover panel. It deleted the one on the left, so we don't have to worry about that because it knows there's a dishwasher there. There's no reason for a cover panel. Awesome. Hit the thumbs up if you're on the way, and I do appreciate it. Tonight we're talking about designing kitchens the easy, free way by using IKEA's tool, regardless of whether or not you have or intend to use IKEA cabinets. This is a great tool to use to lay out a kitchen space so that you can design ideas and uh, come up with ideas. And make sure you vote on that poll um, How about watching MTKD. I do appreciate it. All right, let's keep on a going. Okay, so we'll go back to cabinets and we're going to go to, and here's what we'll do. I'm going to go to my floor plan. And what I want to do is I want to do a little measurement here. So if you click that measurement tool I just clicked on up top and we can just move this slider over here because this is kind of the position I want to go to. We can measure from the side panel, you just click on the side panel and we can measure over to the wall. And it'll give us a distance to that wall, which is 57 and 7 8. So this helps us to determine what kind of cabinets we're gonna go with. Now I'm gonna shock you all tonight by using a base corner in this corner. We're gonna use a standard Standard run of the mill base corner. So we just go down to here for corner and it gives you all your options. We have the lazy Susan option. We have your blind corners. We have your blind corners with nothing in them, which I don't even know why they exist. And we're going to go with a regular 38 by 38 corner base cabinet. We'll throw it on the plan and uh, you can you can spin it around and move it around like that. 
stick it in the corner. There you go. Are you happy with me now? I hope so. All right, just like that, we have our corner cabinet. And what I'll do on this side is I'll block that corner off so you can see uh, the both of them. All right, because over here we have a pipe chase. And over here we have just a regular corner. Now on this wall, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put a pantry, we'll put a fridge, we'll put a drawer bank, whatnot. On this wall over here, I'm going to put a range and vent hood and that kind of thing. And then we'll see if we can fit an island in this kitchen, whether or not it'll fit or not. Okay, that's how we're going to do it. And then what we'll do is we'll just switch some things around and uh, we'll put the range on the other wall over here and we'll put the fridge on the opposite wall and so that we can see what that looks like. And that's that's the main goal. So let's keep let's keep going. Let's throw a fridge in there right away. So we'll go to appliances and we will find our fridges. Where are they at? Fridge freezers. There we go. And I'm going to go with something like this. This is probably a 36 inch. So we're going to select that one, put that in our plan. And I want to go with, uh, I need a lot of pantry space for this kitchen. So we're going to go back to cabinets, down to high cabinets, and we're going to go with door and drawer. So you're going to select the width. We're going to select a 30 inch and we're going to select 90 inches high because that's what I want. I want to go with 40 inch high wall cabinets. That'll take me right up to the ceiling. I'd love to see a corner pantry in the setup. <laughs> I'll try in a minute. All right, so here's a 30 inch, 24 deep, 90, has two drawers on the bottom and bam. -o. Now here's what I wanna do first. Um, what what Ikea does, what the planner does, you'll see here, it automatically adds this filler strip on the 3D visual, but it does not add it to the item list. So if you go to the item list, there is actually no filler there. It's just for the visual. And so what you can do is toggle that on and off. So on any cabinet, you can go down all the way to the bottom and there's this little toggle switch for filler piece and it'll remove it. And um, I suggest you remove it for the purpose of remembering that there isn't actually one there and you need to put one there because you can easily forget that. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to remove it and then I am going to put in a filler strip in that spot. I'm going to use a two inch filler. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to move that cabinet out of the way just for a minute. I'm going to go to cabinets, high cabinets, all the way down here to filler pieces and cover panels, uh, freestanding cover, freestanding filler piece for a tall cabinet. So we're going to click and drag it on our plan. Just drop it there, X that out. So we're going to put it over here. No, not like that. Sometimes it snaps it to a different wall. There we go. I'm going to go like that, put it against that wall. And I'm going to modify it because I only want it to be two inches wide, two inches, and I want it to be 90 inches high. So make sure you do that. And then you can uh, hit enter, X that out, move our fridge, make sure we have room for our pantry that we will move back into place. Now we do have a true filler strip on that pantry, not just a facade that it put in there. So and we can go back to our fridge, slide that over. All right. Okay, um, let's go back to... Oh, here, I, I see a comment I want to address. Uh, hey, Paul, Mark, I keep seeing other kitchen designers, interior designers from Canada, putting gable cover or gables, cover panels, uh, in be between base cabinet sections. They go all the way to the front so that the toe kick is not continuous why i don't know why there's no reason to put a cover panel on a base cabinet unless uh, it's exposed so not sure i don't know why they would do that they go all the way to the front so that the toe kick is not continuous mm, i don't know i don't know why um i don't suggest anybody do that so because uh yeah, there's, there's no reason. That's just extra money that you're spending. So I'm not sure why they do that, Paul. Um, pesky Canadians. <laughs> All right, so now we can uh, put a cabinet in here. Uh, I'm going to guess that this looks to be about... Let's just... Um, 
whoops, let's go measure it. So here's where I want to measure what that space is. We can move this little thing to get us close. I want to measure from that panel to the side, ooh, to the side of my fridge. And it's 37. Perfect. That's great. All right. So we're going to put a 36 inch drawer bank. I'm going to go with the three drawer banks. We're going to go drawer with drawers. Width, we can select 36 inch. The reason I do the width uh, and the height selection is it just narrows down my selection so I don't have to scroll through every size. And so that just makes it a, a little easier to find what you're looking for. And I want to go with three drawer. This has the hidden drawer on top. We'll use that for this. And uh, if you just click it, it puts it wherever it wants, but I'm going to click on it and drag it over to my preferred area and make sure it's butted up against that cabinet. Now, what we're going to do, you'll notice if you click on this cabinet and we modify it, that we can go down here. We can toggle that off, make sure there's no fillers and make sure there's no cover panels. So it puts one on the left. I'm gonna, I don't need one on the left because it's against a fridge. I'm going to put a fridge panel there. So I'm going to delete that. Okay, to, to create room for that fridge panel to go in there. Okay, very cool. Awesome. Now we're going to go to wall ha, high cabinets and down to filler pieces and cover panels because we want to put in a refrigerator panel. I always suggest putting a refrigerator panel on a refrigerator because you can help one build it in to give it that kind of look and um, it creates the you know a blockade so that nothing can go in behind the uh, the, the refrigerator. Canada also have put a snowflake on top of their national crown. What are you talking about? What what what's our national crown? Phil, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Back to freestanding filler pieces for a high cabinet. That's what we want. No, we want a cover panel. So we're going to hit cover panel. I wonder where it went. Where'd it go? Didn't put it anywhere. Okay, so drag it into the plan. And we can put it... Hopefully we can put it, there we go, slide it right in there. Now you're going to have to select it. It is selected already. Hit modify. We're going to make it 94 inches. Why are we making it 94 inches? Because the tall cabinet is 90 and the toe kick space is 4 inches, meaning that you have to make the panel 4 inches, uh, 94 inches. So we're going to do that. The wall cabinets are 40 inches and they start at 54 from the finished floor. This keeps everything uh, on one level, okay? So, yep. All right, bam, just like that, we are starting to have a kitchen. Let's continue on. We'll put a, a cabinet in here, in this space here, and we know it's 36 inches, so we'll go to cabinets. We will go to a cabinet for refrigerator cabinets. See, they make this suit very, very easy. We want it to be 36 inches, and we want it to be 20 inches high. And you only have one that you can select. So you just select that. It's at uh, the wrong height, which is fine. You just put it here. And you have this little up and down arrow. So you can drag it. It has to be kind of freestanding. You can drag it to the height you want it. And then drag it into position. I always go to 2D to make sure that it's on the wall. There you go. See, it's all, all ready to go. Back to 3D. So now we have something that looks like a kitchen. Aren't you loving it? It's a little bit low, isn't it? Let me just see here. So this is where having this tall view comes into play. You can go kind of zoom in here. There we go. We raise it up. Perfect. And I got to make this 94 and a half, not 94. Because the toe kick space is four and a half. There we go. Okay, we're good to go. So you just play around with these things and you'll, you'll figure it out. All right, countertop height. All right, here we have our kitchen looking good. I like it, I like it, I like it. Now we're going to continue adding cabinets. I'm going to put in a regular corner wall cabinet because I want to show you to do both types. So regular type of corner with corner cabinet and then a blocked off corner. We're going to do both of those and then we'll move around some things. I hope you're not bored with this. Um, if you are, I'm sorry. Width, we're going to go 26 inches. Height, we're going to go 40 inches. 
And I'm I love these uh, lazy Susans in a wall in these wall cabinets. It's the only lazy Susan I like actually. It it just makes it so that that second shelf is you can actually get at it. Um, and if something does fall off, it falls off which within reach. Um, so I'm kind of a fan of these. Anyway. Oh, look how it goes, right? So that's okay. You can go in like this, and you can just turn that baby around just like that, selecting it. And there you go. So there you have your wall cabinet, and then we have this space here. This is 36, and we have... Um, what do we have left over? I think we have 48 inches left over. Let's just check my calculator here, uh, just so I can make sure 38 and 36 minus 26. Yeah. Okay. Four feet. I was right. I didn't need the calculator. The crown that they have on their coat of arms and police badges for Canada, Trudeau, Apparently wanted a snowflake on the crown because Canada's cold. <laughs> oh, Trudeau. Let's not talk about that's not let's not talk about him. <laughs> All right. All right. 48 inches. There's a variety of ways we can do that. Easiest way is to go with 224s. And so that's what we'll do for the purpose of this, just so we can do it. Um, so go to width, go to 24, go to height, go to 40 inches, and you have single door or double doors. I think I'm going to go a single door for these because, oops, because, oh, look at that. Put it over there in a little nook space there. We'll go single doors. Oh, hello. All right. So go to 2D. It helps you to um, maneuver things around when you get lost. So we can just move that in there. All right, so what happens is, and you can kind of see it, if I bring it out here, see how it added? I don't know if you can see that that well. I'll zoom in real close. Um, I'll put it in place and I'll drag it out. I'll drag it out here. See how it added that cover panel on the side? So it automatically adds the cover panel when it recognizes that it's going to be open. And when you drag it into place, it removes them. So you remove them on both sides, on this side and that side. So just interesting, um, just good good to know what's going on there. And this cabinet here looks like it can slide over. Okay, there. Now we're in good position. Okay, and then you'll notice on the tall cabinet, I can see it here, there's a cover panel. We want to remove that, which means we'll have to make our filler a little bit wider, which is fine. But I don't need a cover panel there because it's against the wall and there's a filler. And um, that way uh, you're just wasting money. So it's very important to go through and you'll go through at the end to make sure you have filler panels where you need them. And, and when they're not needed, make sure you get rid of them. So delete it. I also sh should say you should probably delete the one on the right because it's next to a fridge. You're not, you're not going to see it. So delete those filler panels. Now what you'll have to do is drag that cabinet over and you'll see you have this space and I'll drag over here. You have this space left over. The filler's not big enough. Um, that's fine for now. We'll change that in a few minutes and we will go from there. What are y'all saying? Let's see. Canada is an interesting place. And thank you for Michael J. Fox. Yes. <laughs> and Jim Carrey. Yes. Uh, Mike Myers is from Canada. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is also from Canada. And MTKD, Jackie, hit the like button. Come on. All right. And it carried away. All right, let's go back to our kitchen design. There's no way I'm going to be able to repurpose this video for anything. Okay, we have this space here. I want to figure out what it is. Um, so I'm going to measure it here in a second. But first, I want to measure it without the cover panel. So the, we go into the dishwasher, go on there, delete the cover panel on the dishwasher, and make sure there's not one on the corner base. And there is, so we're going to delete that. Now we have a true measurement of that space. I go to my measurement tool, select that, and we'll just drag this arrow so we can get right in there. So we're going to go from the side of that, whoop, to the side of this, just 22 inches. Okay, that's not great. Um, the reason it's not great is because uh, IKEA only has one 
half decent option. Well, only have one option for a base cabinet that's 21 inches, um, which would be the closest we'd have without using a filler. So I'll show you what it is. We'll put it in there. Um, we want to have drawers. There's not a drawer bank. It's just a cabinet with full height. Oh, where is it? It's gone. Oh, okay. Well, let's go to doors then. My bad. Uh, let's see. Width. Yeah, 21. So they have this. You can actually get drawers for this. I'm almost certain that you can. Okay, so anyway, we're going to put this on our floor plan, and we're going to hit 2D. I'm going to select it and drag. I don't know what's going on. I want to drag into place. It should drag into place. If it doesn't, it's because it has... No, it doesn't have fillers. Maybe I measured it wrong. Oh, I did measure it wrong. All right, move it. Let's go with an 18. That's even better. So we'll go to an 18. This is what it's all about. You just make mistakes. It's no big deal. 18 inches. We're going to have to put a filler in there. We want to have a three-drawer bank because I like those. Put it on the floor plan. X that out. If you just drag it, put it in there, it'll automatically align itself to the wall. And then it added the filler. See here. But I want to modify it and take that filler out because, remember, there's probably a way I can make that for all of them. I want to put our own filler in that space. Okay, let's go back to our 3D. I hope you're finding this to be valuable if you are designing a kitchen. Remember what I said, um, that this is all about coming up with ideas. It's not about designing an Ikea kitchen. It's about you coming up with ways to design your kitchen using their planner, which they're giving us for free, using their sizes, which is fine. They have enough sizes. You can get an idea of what a kitchen will look like. And this is a great way to do it. So make sure that you check it out if you're trying to design a kitchen. Um, it, it can be very helpful. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you're using Ikea or not. Okay, so we do need to have a filler in that little space right there. And so I'm just going to select the fillers for a base cabinet. And we're going to go with a freestanding filler piece. All right here, we'll just put it on our plan. We'll click. I wonder if it'll let me drag it into place. No. Okay, well, let's go to 2D. We'll zoom in on it. And we will drag it. It won't let us do that. Uh, of course it won't. So we're going to change its width. We'll make it one inch and then we'll do it. So it's going to be one inch. There you go. There you go, little fella. And we'll drag you in there. All right. And we'll modify you to be two inches. I don't know what that distance is. All right, it looks fairly close to two inches. That's fine. Okay. Anyway, there's a filler there. There you have it. All right. So we have a kitchen. It's coming along. It's looking good. Let's just move over to the other side because I want to design this corner. I think you can you can figure out what you need to figure out to add some wall cabinets here. But let's just move to this corner so I can show you that because that's going to be a little more um, you know interesting, I think. Uh, so in this corner, we have the standard run-of-the-mill corner base and wall corner which is fine, by the way, if that's the way it goes. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I know I go on about corner cabins, so I don't like them, and I don't. But listen, this is kitchen design we're talking about, so make sure it's functional for you, not for me. Now, IKEA does us a great favor in that they have a filler that is a corner filler. So the, the last one here is a freestanding filler piece for a corner base. So we're going to select that, and it gives you this corner filler, which is genius. So we're going to use that. Now, for the sake of our picture, because I can't change the color of that pipe chase. No, um, oh, I can't even select it. Um, I, I can't change its color. So let's just go back to define your space here. I'm going to get rid of it. We'll just pretend it's there. But I, because I can't change its color, it's going to look silly. Um, so let's just remove it. We'll hit continue. Um, it, it doesn't matter for the sake of this video. Or for your sake, even if you're doing this, it doesn't really matter. We can pretend it's there. So now we can just select our corner filler and we can move it right back in place. And it's set for us. I love this. 
this is e this is the easiest way to set a corner filler like this, and I love it because in my design program, which I pay a lot of money for, it 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 doesn't even I can't really do this 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 easily. It just takes more time. So, so there you go, Bamo. Now I'm guessing that's about thirty inches. Let's just play around with it. So, you know, maybe not every time you want to go up and select the little measurement tool and select everything. So you can just play around with cabinets. Let's just do it that way. So we'll go with drawers. And I think it's about 30 inches. So we'll select a 30 inch. And you know what? For this one, I'm going to go with a four drawer uh, because I want lots of cutlery maybe. So I don't know. We'll just put it in there. It was very close to that size. All right. And the, the problem is with any kitchen is you might have to have a spot where you have fillers. So you don't want your corner filler to be any more than three inches wide um, necessarily. You don't want it to be really any less than that. Three inches is a great size for a corner filler. And we'll double check its size. It's three by three. So that's perfect. And then this is going to have a filler automatically between the sink and this cabinet. Of course, um, we want to put it in ourselves. So we're going to select that. And we're going to do that. So notice... It doesn't, even though I have this modified, it doesn't put a filler there on this cabinet. Interesting, right? But if I move it to the left, oh, it doesn't again. Let's see if I move it back. Nope. Oh, okay, sweet. Well, I have no idea why it does that. Okay. <laughs> no big deal. Let's go to base fillers and we'll put a filler piece in. You need to get in the habit of putting the fillers in yourself so that you know that they're there and you're paying for them instead of them visually being there and then not they're not on the plan. You got to buy them or you forget them or whatnot. So, and I'm sure if you go into IKEA, they'll help you with all this. Um, oh, look, you're inside a cabinet. Woohoo! Isn't that cool? Look how the while we're inside the cabinet, check out how the the detail. This is what their cabinets look like. By the way, they have these slanted sides. Very cool. All right, awesome. So there we have one part of our corner that's blocked off. Let's go to our 2D view and we can see it here. We have this corner filler, bammo, just like that. Now let's put a range in. We'll do this one in 2D. All right, so we go to cabinets, we go to ranges. And you know maybe you have a wall oven and a cooktop. Let's do wall oven and a cooktop, okay? Let's, I changed my mind. Let's do it that way. So we have to go to oven and a microwave oven. Oh, let's do that. I was going to put an OTR in this kitchen, but I guess I'm not anymore. Anyway. So we want to go with 30 inches wide because that's all the option you have. We want to go with 90 high and we'll select, we'll select this one. All right. We'll just throw that in there. We'll put that right against the wall. Actually, I'm going to put a filler there first. All right. Natalie, a few months ago, listen to your past suggestions to use this program. I did make a couple floor plans. This is a learning curve, but it was so helpful uh, to give an estimate price. Awesome. Yeah, it, it does take a little bit of learning to do, but it, it, it does help, especially pricing if you're using IKEA. And like I said, just designing a kitchen space. So I'm glad that helped. Um, and yeah, there is there is a learning curve to any of these things. But I think I, I, the IKEA one is probably by far the easiest one to learn that's out there. There is other ones like SketchUp and Room Sketcher, stuff like that. And, um, you know, maybe in the future, I'll try to do one of those, which would mean I'd have to learn how to use it because I never use those programs because, you know, there is a learning curve to that. And sometimes that can, you know, you got to have time for that. Freestanding filler piece for high cabinets is the one we want. And we're going to put that right against the wall. We're going to leave it. Actually, I'm going to change it to exactly three inches for this one. That might change later. And make it 94 and a half, remember? Enter. There you go. And you just hit X and it does it for you. Then we can select our cat. Oh, look at that. There we go. Okay, now we're going to put in a cabinet for a range top. And they have them right here for a cooktop. And let's do one with a drawer. Let's go width. Let's do 36. And we'll go... Ah, we'll do this one right here. We'll throw that one on our plan. 
All right. Now we are getting somewhere. I'm going to go with two 24s on either side of there. What I'm going to do for that one is go to cabinets, base cabinets with drawers. And we'll go with 24 because I think that's what it is. And I think what we'll do, just for the sake of it, we're going to go with three drawers because, or four drawer, because uh, maybe we want to have more room for utensils. And I'm going to slide that all the way over. And we'll put another one there. This is just going marvelously. All right, there we go. So this is our kitchen so far. What do you think? We got a blind corner, blocked corner rather, with two drawer banks, three inch corner, 90 degree corner. So that's really good. And on the other side, we have our regular corner. So just like that. And we'll block off a, a, the top as well. And uh, we're having something that looks like a kitchen. This is a beautiful kitchen so far. What do you think? There you go. We got our wall oven. We got our cooktop. We got our fridge. We got our pantry. Tons of counter space. We're going to see if we can get a small little island in here in a minute. And, uh, you know, just like this, you can just lay out a kitchen so easily uh, with a little bit of a um, little bit of help from MTKD and some practice. You'll be up and running in no time. OK, let's put in a blind or a blocked off corner for the top. And we will um, we'll see how that how easy that is. Now, unfortunately, uh, when you go to filler pieces, they do not have a corner. Uh, filler piece. So you have to make one. So anyway, they, I don't know they did it for the bottom. They didn't do it for the top. Go figure. I don't know why they didn't do that, but that's no, that's no problem. So we will do a freestanding filler piece for a wall cabinet. We're going to select that and drag it and just plop it on our wall there. And we'll just, we'll put it anywhere for now. We're going to do another one, put it over here. Oh, listen, there you go. There you go. There's there. Fine. Stop. Okay. Let's go to 2d. Cause it's a little easier to do this in 2d. Get rid of this so we can see everything. So we can see our two little fillers there. They are three and seven eighths. We're going to make them three inches. And we're going to make them 40 inches high because that's our wall cabinet height. There we go. And I'm going to duplicate that so that um, I don't have to change this one. All right, you can duplicate every, any anything you want, any cabinet. And it makes it super easy. So we're going to drag these. And, uh, you know, they, it kind of has a snap feature. So when you get close to an item, it snaps in. And that's very helpful. So um, hit the like and subscribe button if you like that little tip. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Okay, this one's not on the wall. So I want to make sure it's right on the wall. And we're just going to move it to the wall. Move this one over. So it just takes a little playing around with. There you go. Okay, so we're going to leave that just like that for now. We'll go back to our 3D and we will see that they are on our floor plan. And there we have our corner filler. So you have to build that one yourself. Not a big deal. And um, and, and away we go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get carried away. Uh, there is a Lazy Susan, which I discussed. Uh, you know, it's good to see how that goes. Definitely not an OTR. Maybe, maybe I will put one in. I don't know. The night's young. Does this program have a tool to measure the size of the working triangle um no not that i know of not that i know of um but i mean i don't i'm not concerned with working triangles <laughs> all right Let's put a cabinet on each side. So now what we will do is go with a door. And there's lots of different cabinets here we can use. We go height, 40 inches high. And I don't know what the size of that is. This looks to be about, I'm going to guess 36 inches. So let's just do that. Let's just put a 36 in. And away we go there. My goodness. This is why 2D is helpful. You just select that cabinet, put it in place. All right, now we'll go to 3D, and there we go. And we just got to drag it down so it's at the right height. Okay, perfect. So that's that's pretty good. That's really tight to that window. So I'm not super fan of that. So this is why this is helpful. You can just look at it and say, I don't know. I'm going to change the view here to default so we can go up a little bit higher. 
And there you go. So this might be helpful as well when you're doing wall cabinets. And uh, so you, that might be too tight to that window. Uh, so maybe we'll just remove that cabinet altogether. And then we'll go back here. So the next cabinet down is a 30 inch with doors. So 30 inches wide, height is 40, only gives you one option. So you can select that. It'll throw it on the plan and you just drag it over to here. And it's at the right height. So we're going to select these and drag those up. Select this one and drag it up. And there you have it. I don't think that's in the right height. No, it's not. Okay. Okay, perfect. That's fine for now. So that's good. We have a little more clearance there. I don't know. Let's see. Let's duplicate that. And then we'll throw, hmm, let's try a fifth, let's try, no, let's not. Let's remove that. And uh, we're gonna go with the 24 and the 12. So let's start with the 12. Just drop it on the plan. And then we're gonna go to a 24, 24, 40. All right, and our 12. No, okay. I'm going to delete that. 24 and 21. I'm going to have to measure it. So we're going to go to measurement tool. Having it to our, oh, not to there. <laughs> to there. Oh, no. All right, I think it's 26. Uh, so... Okay. The measurement tool is a little fin finicky and I disappeared. Sorry about that. Uh, the measurement tool is a little bit finicky, so that's fine. Um, it, it gives, it gets, gets you within reason. Uh, what I want to figure out is what this distance is here because we want to match that on the other side. So the best way to do that, we can just select the side of that cabinet and then we want to uh, zoom out, move this over here so we can get in on this window. Zoom in here. So that is approximately, doesn't measure the window very well. There's another way to do this too, seven and three quarter. Okay. Okay, and that was uh, 26. So let's throw another cabinet on here. And we're gonna go 40 inches high. Width is, uh, we'll try an 18. There we go, that looks better. Okay, so 24. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see. I don't like the way that looks. So here's what we're gonna do. Hmm. I'm gonna leave it for now, because I'm not concerned. I wanna go over to here. All right, let's, put a cabinet above our range and let's go with a range hood. Um, so let's go to appliances and we'll go to extractor hood. Gives you a few different options here from Ikea. Of course, we're using all the Ikea appliances, but what I said before, and I'll say again, this doesn't matter if you're using Ikea or not. What matters is that you're getting the look that we want and that's uh, what we're going for. So we can delete these because we can see we have quite a high bill here packed up for us already. So this is our extractor hood. Oh, sorry. You can see that on the plan there, all right. It does a pretty good job of disappearing these walls so you can see what's going on behind it. Yeah, I'll switch those in a second, Jackie. I just got bored of that section for a, for a minute. All right, so now we're going to go to cabinets, and we're going to cabinets with doors, and we will go with a, we'll throw in 15 inches wide. And we'll throw that over here. All right, perfect. Okay, this is what I want to show you, is uh, you got this cabinet here, but it's hinged incorrectly. We don't like the way that's hinged, so what you do is select it, and you just go to modify, you go down to handles and you modify the handle and you can select right center or left 
and it will change the handle position to the left. So this would be more what would be normal. And on this side, I don't know what that distance is, but let's see what a 30 looks like. Duplicate that. Whoa, threw it way over there. Let's just drag that cabinet up here. This is where the this is where the program gets finicky. All right, there we go. That's too close. We'll go to the twenty four. Um, now again, I'm not obeying all my rules <laughs> as I go along here, but that's fine. I'm not doing it because I don't have time. But normally, I would want to have cabinets that open out. Um, did it throw that somewhere? I want to have cabinets that open out away from this appliance and not um, so that your head has to get around it. So let's go back to 24, 24 wide. Well, I guess we could do that with a single door, single door cabinet. There we go. Okay. Now we can zoom right in on that. This is where the wall, the little thing on the floor comes in handy. You got to move it. Oops, a little finicky. That's okay. You got to move it over to here because that's where we're going to be looking at. You can zoom in now, right? Nice and tight on that spot. And when you see this filler, no, everything looks to be okay. I think it's at the right height. Let's move our, just bear with me as I go through this. Yeah, it's a little high. Okay. So we select it and we're going to just lower it. There we go. We're getting somewhere now. And we'll go back to default. Okay, so now we have our basic kitchen lined up here. Now, this looks pretty good. We have our blocked off corner on the on the right side of the sink. We have our regular corner base cabinet and our regular corner wall cabinet on the left side of the sink. We have our pantry, our fridge. So if we we zoom out and take a bird's eye view here. We have a very lovely kitchen space here. I'm going to move this to the center. We can rotate around this kitchen uh, quite easily. Just by clicking and dragging your mouse. <laughs> Rules were meant to be broken. Yes, they were. So there we, we have a beautiful kitchen. Now, let's say you're happy with this. You have one blocked off corner. You have one corner that is regular. You like your fridge position and you like where your um, oven and microwave are, everything's fine, everything's happy. So now what you wanna do is, I didn't want a white kitchen and I didn't want butcher block countertop. So if you select this cabinet and hit modify and go down to countertops, you can do a few different things. So one, you can modify it, uh, which means you can change the overhang um, to the left or the right of that cabinet. And let's click more options. Uh, no, let's just go back because I want to show you something else. So we're going to go back. We can go to style and color. So this is really the, the main thing. You want to change your style and color. And I don't want that butcher block. I want to go with something. Let's see what this looks like. So this is what I want to show you. If you select this, it'll allow you to apply to all or just apply to the one section. And we want to apply it to the whole thing and it changes all our countertops in one foul swoop, just like that, okay? Same thing goes with modifying the handles. I don't like those particular handles, so I want to change them to something else. And maybe I wanna change them to, there's the ones that are selected. Maybe I'll go with, oh, there's so many options. So we can scroll down, there's lots of options. Ah, these look interesting, so let's select that and apply to all, it changes all of them all at once. So this is great. And then we can also, at that same cabinet, hit modify and change our drawer front to a different color. And uh, we're really into the blue. Uh, it's probably not gonna go with our wall color, so let's not go there. Let's do gray. So we'll do the Axted, and we want to apply to all. Uh, we're going to change the whole thing. Unavailable product. Oh, my goodness. Why? We can't apply this option to all products with, within your... Oh, okay. Well, that's no fun. Okay. Well, let's go to a different color then. Ooh. Let's go with the uh, Encoping. Apply to all. 
There we go. So you'll notice a couple things. You got all this white showing. We'll deal with that in a minute. All right, this is our color for now. We just changed it. This is what we like. We've seen the sample in the store and the shore, and we're very happy with it. And now we want to make some other changes. So anything that's exposed with IKEA, you have to apply panels to because their boxes, at least in the United States, are only white. In Canada, they have white and a brown color. Uh, but that still means you still have to apply a panel anywhere that... Um, that you need to have one. So you need to have one in this cabinet. So you select the cabinet, hit modify, go down to right cover panel and hit add. And you wanna select the same color that you just did, Enco Ping. And you want to apply to just that one section. If you hit apply all, it'll add it uh, everywhere. And you might not want it everywhere. So you're just gonna to apply it to that one section. You'll see it changes. And we're gonna do this to all the cabinets. It's fairly simple. Once you get the hang of it, you just go add select the one that you want, select apply to all, and uh, you're done just like that. We'll select this one. Oh, we want to change the position of that handle also at the same time. So we'll go modify up there left. We'll go to right. Then we'll go back and we'll go down to right cover panel and we'll go down to ankle ping, apply to section. You can see as you do this a couple times, it becomes quite simple to do. You select that cabinet. We already changed the handle, so we're just going to do the left cover panel and make that ankle ping and apply to that section. Same thing with this cabinet now because, oh, I guess you got to change that as well. We need to apply that. So we are going to left cover panel, and we want that to be ankle ping as well. Apply to that one section. And I think there's a right cover panel on here, which we want to remove. We do not need it. Oh, no, there isn't. Perfect. All right, we'll hit X on that. Let's go to our filler. It's disturbing me because it's going up to the ceiling. Maybe it's uh, too high, nine, four and a half. No, it's the right height. So it just got to lower this thing, maybe. Um, or maybe I got to make it 90 because it set it at the same height as that. Yeah, I gotta make it 90, my bad. I have to make the fridge panels 94 and a half. So there we go, we have that done. So there you go, look at that. Now, underneath here, I'll change these ones in a minute. I know there's a little white showing here and white over here, we'll change all that. Um, all the cabinets automatically have a, um, this is a pretty good triangle, Kira. Uh, all of these, um, how many cabinets in this design? Well, we're going to go to in a little bit. We'll, we'll look at the item list Sanjiv, and we'll see uh, the breakdown. It gives you an item list. So that's very helpful. Um, so like I said, this is a great way to lay out a kitchen space. You don't have to use Ikea. You're just saying this is what I kind of want my kitchen to look like. Then you could print this off, bring it anywhere and say this is kind of the design I want. And then they can they have a starting point for you. But if you are choosing Ikea, um, just know that all these cabinets come equipped with lights already already on there. Basically, Ikea set it up so that you have to get rid of them. Um, and if you forget, you, you buy them. And you might not want to buy Ikea's lights um, for a number of reasons. So you do have to go and delete them from every cabinet that you do. I'll leave them on for now, but if you want to, you just hit delete and it gets rid of it. Um, so we'll just delete it on that one for now. And that, that, that'll be that. But you can see it puts it on underneath there. If I zoom in here, you can see that little section. So that's just a representative of the light. Now, um, you may want to put some molding on this kitchen, which I'll show you how to do, but let's just get rid of these white little uh, pieces. Oh, and then there's the toe kick. We'll do that. So let's select this cabinet because this has two problems. We're going to go to modify. We're going to go down to legs and toe kick, and we're going to modify that. And style and color, my bad. And we're going to select the one that we want, which is the Enco Ping. Uh, let's see here. Where is it at? I don't see it. Why don't I see it? Why don't they have it on here? What are you doing to me? Dark gray. Ankle ping. Oh, I see it right there. We're going to hit apply to all because we want these all to be changed at once. So that's very helpful. And then we'll go back to this cabinet and we want to modify something here. What do I want to modify? Inner drawer. No, no, no. Um, oh, it's the filler. It's the filler that we need to modify. We need to add a wall panel, wall edge strip. It's just not wide enough. 
it's not wide enough so it's showing the white why is it doing it on this cabinet here let's just go to this cabinet modify modify why is it doing that let's go this is what I, I'm not sure on this one why it's doing that so look I can see it right there there's a panel there's a left cover panel where is it at why can't I find it oh right there it is delete okay <laughs> my bad now we can drag that and we will drag this one. Oops. Oh, okay. You're probably watching this going, what is this guy doing? All right, there we go. Just got to play around a little bit. It's no big deal. You can get it. Okay, we did that. And on this side here, we're going to do the same thing. We'll drag that over. Sometimes it doesn't want to drag over. It snaps it to the other cabinet. So just remove it and then move it back into place. Uh, just like that. Zoom in on it if you need to, to make sure there's nothing funky going on. And then we can drag this one back too. Whoa, hello. Just like that. And it just snaps it to the right. I'm not sure how to not make it snap to the right. Uh, so that's bothering me. But anyway, it's probably, let's see, let's have a look. All right, that looks a little bit better. All right, I got to change this panel here, so we'll do that. We'll modify that. And we're going to go to the style of ankle ping. Hello. And it changed it just like that. Done. Okay. And see the side of this cabinet? We see the side of it here. Oops. So maybe we will go put a panel on there because we don't want to see that. But I will say this, if you have extra panel, you could just do that one little section. You don't really need to go um, all the way with it. I do see a question. I'll check that out in one second as soon as I modify this. Uh, right cover panel. It's saying, it's saying there's a right cover panel. Why is it not showing it? Modify. Here we go. Add a right cover panel. We'll do that. Apply that section. Okay. So yeah, you may want to uh, just add a piece instead of buying a whole thing. So here it is. Uh, do, 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 do. Here's the question. Uh, is it possible to add toe kick drawers to IKEA cabinets? Uh, you're going to have to custom make them, but yes. As long as you have the space under there, IKEA comes on legs. So you could definitely modify something. It's not going to be something that you can find at IKEA, uh, but you can buy hardware kits uh, online to build your own toe kick drawers, and you could essentially build them. Um, yeah, if, so if you're handy, you could definitely do that. I don't see it being a big deal. Uh, Mark, does it let you put a trim piece right above the fridge to get even more fit a look? Yeah, I, it does. I'm not, and we're going to check that out in one second here. Um, I'm going to add some of those. That's a good question. So let's go back. If I miss your questions, because I'm not looking there, so um, we'll go back to the questions in a minute, and hopefully if you have some, I can answer them. Let's go to that fridge cabinet, because we do want to add some molding. So, you know, I'm happy with my kitchen. I don't like this countertop, so I want to change it. I'm going to go with something lighter, just to uh, go with something lighter. And I want to go with, like, a whitish kind of... Uh, let's go with this one. Apply to all. Okay, that looks better. And this here is, doo -doo -doo -doo. I gotta just make it wider, I think. Oops, so modify three and seven eighths. Let's just make it four and a quarter. Uh, I think, yeah, that's better. It just gets rid of that white uh, edge here. The same with this one, I can see it because it's not the right size. Two, let's just make it three inches. I think that should make it all okay. There we go. So that just takes away that little bit of uh, reveal that you can see. Um, you know, again, this is just a, a program. It's not meant to be perfect, obviously, uh, but it does give you some some pretty good some pretty good views. So here's our our overall kitchen. This cabinet looks a little bit low to me. You can just adjust these things. Now let's just add some molding. Whoops. Oh yeah, what did I just do there? Hit Control Z. 
The other thing I like about this, let's just spin around here. Let's go to our pantry section. We'll zoom in a little bit. You can select on it and hit open and it opens the doors and the drawers. So you can see kind of what that is. You can't individualize these, but uh, these you can open them and close them. So that's a cool feature. You can do these with every cabinet. So we'll go down to our Lazy Susan, of course, which we love to open and see the beautiful Lazy Susan that's in there. Thank you, Susan, for coming out to the party. All right. Same with our uh, drawer bank over here, or this cabinet here. Open that up. Bammo. So this gives you some great idea of uh, what you have in store for you in your beautiful kitchen, if you're going with Ikea, but if you're not, no big deal. All right. So we have this, this kitchen. This isn't what I would choose, by the way, but, you know, it just is what it is for now. This is why I'm not an interior designer. All right. Uh, okay, we're going to add moldings. So we can select that cabinet. We can go to modify, and it allows you to add a deco strip cornice, uh, top cover panel, bottom cover panel. So actually for this cabinet, if we weren't going to put a, a, a molding there, you could do a bottom cover panel and cover that white up altogether. Uh, but for this one, we will do a deco strip and we will make it inko ping. We'll apply it to this one section and zoom in. Now, I don't know, Paul, if it lets me... Let me just select over here for a minute. It doesn't let me select it. I don't think it allows me to modify its size. Oh, oh yes, it does. Um, no, it doesn't. It just lets you modify the grain position, I believe, horizontal or vertical. Seems to be changing more than just that. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't allow you to modify its size. So, in that case, we would also go with a bottom cover panel um, so that we don't have to see that. So now when we look up underneath, all you see is the um, that color, so. All right, so that, that works. But in, in real life, we would make this panel fit perfectly with the fridge. At least that's what I would suggest for you to do. Um, and then on this cabinet, let's just go with, hit modify again. And we're going to go with a cornice, which is crown molding, basically. And we can go with Enco Ping wood effect. No, it, it looks, oh, there it is. Uh, and we're going to apply to all. And it'll just add that everywhere. Now on this cabinet here, it doesn't return into the wall. So you go on there, go to modify, and I believe you can go select right side. And, oh, there you go. And it'll return it into the wall. So that's another thing you can do. And oh, it just, I got rid of it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's uh, what to do with that cabinet. Again, you do the same thing on this cabinet. Select it, modify. So there's there's quite a bit of stuff that you can do with this. We're going to go left side. And, uh, you know, you play around with it. We're going to do this cabinet. We'll do the right side. You, you necessarily don't have to do this when you're just laying out a kitchen because you are, um, you're just really trying to come up with design ideas. But for the sake of this finished look that we're going to go for, we're going to do it. So we're going to modify that, and we'll go to left side. I, I never really ever do this uh, a whole lot, but um, it, it just it does make it look more complete. So there we have our basically our completed kitchen. Uh, we could put some light molding or deco strip along everything because well, that would make more sense if we have lights so we apply to everywhere. And there basically there you have it. You uh, hide those light fixtures. So this is our our completed kitchen. And, um, you know, now, was that challenging? Um, maybe. Was that challenging to watch? Probably. <laughs> Probably very challenging to watch. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, my goodness, what's he doing? Um, my apologies. But I do want to want to walk through this to show you just how relatively easy this is to to play with. It doesn't cost any money. It, it, it's, you know, completely free to use and it's pretty versatile. Yeah, you move things around, you make some mistakes, but you'll learn as you go and you can do this easy. It's kind of actually fun to do if you're interested in kitchen design, you just want to kind of play around with it. This is a great tool to use 
um, so that you can kind of practice that. It doesn't mean you have to become a kitchen designer, but it does allow you to play around with your designs, especially if you're going to be designing a kitchen. And, you know, we have this filler that needs to be changed. So no big deal. You can just go back to that anytime. You can kind of modify that size. We'll make it three inches and, um, and change that. There you go, just like that. And uh, like I said, it allows you to, to kind of move things around and, and help you design a kitchen. And you're like, well, okay, let's just go to the next step and then we'll, 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 we'll mess this up a little bit. Um, because it'll also give you, if you hit continue, I'm going to go back and show you something else too. It'll give you some warnings. It didn't like something that I did and that's okay. Give you some recommendations. So you can check on those if you want. And, we'll, and then it gives you these floor plans. So you can print all these off these 2d floor plans. Here's our measurements. It's just a mess of measurements, but this gives you a floor plan with all the measurements, all the sizes. So that's very helpful. And then it has all these elevation views. Uh, which shows you the exact dimensions of everything, which again is very helpful when you're uh, planning out a kitchen. And then it gives you these other areas here. This is a filler. What is this? Oh, this is oh countertop. This is countertop cuts. Uh, so it gives you countertop cuts. Very, very cool. I never I ever looked at that before. <laughs> so you learn something new every day. So you have your uh, elevation views, uh, which absolutely needed. You can check, oh, look, you got eight inches here, nine inches here. Uh, so you can go back and remedy that, you know, with filler strips. And you have all your uh, your cuts for your countertop. So very, very cool. And then you have recommendations. And I think if we hit back, it'll bring our recommendations up on the side. Gives you design tips um, and then recommendations. And if you click on it, I believe it tells you what cabinet is the show in 3D. Oh, those cabinets have problems that you can address. So it's probably because I have one cabinet too far over. It's not positioned correctly. And that's all usually that those problems really mean. So you can close the help center by doing that. And you can open it anytime by just hitting the question mark. So something you can look at if you want to, if you're interested in. Now I want to go back here because you can go to dining. You can add bar tables and stools. So you can add some things like that. Of course, these are all Ikea items, but uh, very interesting. You can add dining chairs. Um, Let's just add one. Bam, there we go, dining chair in there. So just like that. I don't know why it's, oh, it's highlighted. There you go. Got our little dining chair. We'll move that around. Very cool. So you can add other things like that. So you can add a little table, little stackable things. Uh, kitchen extras are here. So you can add trolleys. Ooh, maybe you can't fit an island, but you can fit this very cool Kungsford trolley in there. I like, I like. What else do we have here? That's all. Okay. Let's go back to extras. Oops. Kitchen extras. We can do wall shelves, step stools, and ladders. All right. So lots of little things we can add here. So very cool. The Comfort series is on there as well. You can add these to your wall, these little shelves and whatnot. So this is all great. You can search for things. Um, you could go wall shelf. And it'll just bring up, bam, just anything that's in the plan that you can add to your design. So very helpful tool to use. Once you're happy with your kitchen and you want to know what all this costs, you can just go to continue. And it will give you, uh, well, you can proceed. You can print off that list. You can share this with somebody else. And you can uh, go up here to your item list and your notes. You might want to make notes along the way. But your item list will tell you all the different cabinets that you have. And where'd it go? There we go. Let's bring that up again. All right. So it gives you all your different cabinets and their prices and the price of all the different components and all the SKUs that you'll need when you go to Ikea. You can give this to them and it'll just populate the whole order for you. So it's all done for you, basically. And uh, they can help you with this as well. So this gives you the, the cabinet. So this is cabinet number two. It's our tall cabinet. We have you know, our, our base section. So th this can be a little confusing because there's so many parts and so many SKUs, but it's all there for you. And if you go down all the way to the bottom, I'll scroll all the way down and uh, we'll go way, way down to the bottom here. Oh, it gives you all your lights. So it gives you uh, all the lights that you're using. It gives you all the extras that you have. So you can kind of go through that um, to see what that is. But this here uh, gives you your total price, which is very helpful. And right now there's a sale. Uh, so look at that, we're saving like a thousand bucks already just by doing that. So this is the 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 IKEA planner um, that section. So we can just uh, go back to make it yours. 
we'll delete this. We're going to try to put a little island in. We'll delete this. And what time is it? Oh, we got. Oh, we're way past the time. <laughs> way past the time. I didn't. See, I didn't get any of your questions. You know what? So okay, I'm going to end this here, and I'll just jump on and look at your questions. We'll chat for a minute. Um, yeah, you can easily just move things around. So you know, don't be afraid. Once you get it all designed, you know, save if you want, and then just save it again as something else but just move this thing around let's just move it over here for a second we're going to move this cabinet click and drag just want to get it out of the way we want to move this out of the way we want to move this out of the way okay we just want to move that we want to go over to uh, this cabinet over here because we want to see what this looks like over on this wall so we're going to slide that over all right so this is the this is just the process of saying okay well i see what that looked like now i want to see you know what it looks like if i move my fridge over to this wall Let's see, we're going to move that. So, you know, no big deal. We're just moving things around and we're making a mess of it, but it's okay because we can easily fix it. And now we can go back to our fridge, select that, we'll put it over next to this tall cabinet here. We'll move this back over to here. Oh, look at that. It's backwards. We don't want it backwards. Come on. There we go. Put it in like that. Where'd our panel go? We'll select our panel. We'll put that there. Okay, now all of a sudden we're starting to see, oh, our kitchen can look this way now. And uh, we can start to see a different way to lay out this kitchen. We can put this over there. And I don't know how much room I have for that tall cabinet, but let's just slide it over. Okay, so now you're getting a different idea. Okay, maybe I would like my, my stove, my range to be on this wall. Maybe I don't want it to be that far over. I can put that on this side and move this cabinet. So I just want to see, I'm not going to do this and complete it, but just so that we have an idea of what this looks like when we go this way. So we start to see that, okay, we can lay our kitchen out like this. We have to add probably a 12 inch here. We can add a, another cabinet here. Maybe we have a narrow, tall cabinet here. And easily, just like that, we're just moving around this kitchen to give us some different ideas of what this can look like. So that's kind of the, the gist of this whole plan. And hopefully, if you are designing an IKEA kitchen or any kitchen for that matter, you can use this tool to really help you. It's free. It, it's uh, very pretty user friendly, like I showed you. All you do is that modify button gives you everything you need. And uh, in the event that you don't want any handles, you can hit delete and uh, it'll just delete handles for you. We can hit this cabinet, hit modify. We don't want to buy their sink. We don't want to buy their, their other thing. We don't want to buy any handles. So we can just select and, and delete them all if we want. Easy to do. Uh, we can go in, we can modify anything we want. Just go and play with it. And, uh, but the, the main thing is that you can see, you know what, here we go. We got this kitchen that's all laid out and uh beautiful we can see what it looks like different ways and then we can go and put an island in here so we'll just use this cabinet here that's already out on the floor we'll just go up here and see what that looks like get our our tool out that we can measure to see you know how much distance we have so in this kitchen the, the really big thing is how much space do we have from this corner to this corner because we have lots of room in here but these corners can cause us a problem so it looks like in this kitchen we could put in an island and uh, maybe we'll just put in a, a few of these cabinets side by side. There we go. That's about as big as the island as we're going to get. And um, so there you have it. We have an island. Oop, we don't want that. We want it lined up. And if we select that cabinet, we'll see that it has a back cover panel already attached to it. But we want to change its style to the ankle ping. We'll do that to uh, that section. We want to do it to the other section as well. But let's go back to our 3D. And then we're going to... Oh, oh, I'll show you one more thing um, that I just found out. <laughs> I'm going to show you one more thing I just found out. The camera's gone. No big deal. Um, okay, so here we have an island. If we go to 2D and we just select, we hit 2D twice. Um, there we go. Anyway, we can we can toggle on our measurements uh, so we can we can see that. I think there's a way that if you can, maybe not. Okay. Anyway, forget that. So there's our island. We can see what that looks like. And uh, so that's very helpful. Okay, that's a lot. That was a lot. And I apologize if that was too much information. Uh, but uh, I thought that was pretty helpful um, just to be able to, to look at that kitchen plan and get some visualizations of the colors that you like, the countertops that you like, the types of uh, positions for cabinets that you want. So uh, definitely try to use that if you want to try to, you know, 
play around with kitchen design. I think it's very helpful. Aside from doing that, you can also just uh, come to me and I can help you do that. I have two things that are very helpful. One is my one-on-one -on -one consultations, which uh, we just get on one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom. We look at your plans. We can go over your IKEA plans or any plans that you have. And it's very helpful to get some different ideas for your future kitchen renovation that you're planning. I know that other clients who use it find it very valuable because it's, it's just a little, you know, just talk one-on-one -on -one about a particular plan and uh, not distracted by anything else. And it, you know, we can move things around in real time. It's, it's quite, it's quite a good, it's very valuable. Um, and then I do this Ikea plan as one of my design solutions. So if you are looking for an Ikea kitchen, I can design it for you. Um, 3D visuals, which are, you know, a little better quality than the Ikea ones, but then also transfer that all to the Ikea planner so that you don't have to do any of that. So that's a very helpful uh, thing to do as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So that was the Ikea planner in a nutshell, the easiest uh, and best free tool to use for kitchen design on the internet, in my opinion, um, to, to get you up and running in doing kitchen design. I'm sorry if I missed most of, most of all the questions, but um, <laughs> totally in the zone. Thanks so much for everyone for being here. I'm just kind of scrolling through here and seeing. Oh my goodness. I, I think he's on a roll. Not the roll. He's not a poser. He's a real deal. <laughs> Too kind, Jackie. You're awesome. Um, let me just scroll back up here. Okay. Oh, I sorry, I didn't I didn't get I didn't see that one. Filler strip on the side above the fridge. Could you turn a filler strip on its side above the fridge? Yeah, you could just make a pan you could make it out of a panel. You could cut any size you want. Um for, for those t sort of areas <laughs> open shelving oh lenore I, I did see your email by the way i just need a chance to respond to you so i will do that but uh awesome yeah i think it's gonna look great when you're all finished that's good and okay oh paul was at ikea earlier browse to the kitchen display afterwards had a black finished kitchen emerald green painted walls looked amazing but still ooh, emerald green jackie's questioning that choice uh, yeah, we didn't get to see how many cabinets. Well, you just go on that floor plan, I think, and you'd have to actually just count. I don't know how many were there uh, off the top of my head. <sighs> okay. All right. Phil, you got it, man. Um, I'm going to go hang out with the rest of the fam fam and uh, wash hands, wash hands. Is that what I was doing? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, listen, everyone, thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me for this uh, hour and 32 minutes. I really do appreciate you all. This video coming up on Saturday is going to be a fun one, doing a little experiment. We're talking about gas ranges, electric ranges, and induction ranges. And so that'd be a fun little video that we're doing. And other than that, we'll see you again next uh, Wednesday for another live stream. So that should be great. Um, I don't know what we'll talk about. We'll talk about something. But I do actually have a designer in Toronto that agreed to maybe come on and, and chat. So that's going to be um, that be interesting. Maybe it'll be this Wednesday, uh, kitchen designer. So uh, that should be cool. Anyway, listen, everyone. Thanks so much again. Thumbs up on the way out. Oh, let's just check our poll. Listen, before I go, Phil, let's check our poll. Let's see how we did, Phil. All right, 69% said, of course, we'll watch MTKD. Maybe 21% uh, of you after watching more MTKD videos. And no, but I'll keep watching MTK videos, which means 100% of you are watching MTKD videos, which is exactly what I wanted to get out of that poll. So thanks so much for watching, tuning in whenever you do, whenever you see this. Have a great week. God bless you all. And we will uh, we'll see you soon.